Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habita fillah The Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said Ma min shayin athqlu fi mizan al mu'min yawm al qiyam min husn al khuk wa inna Allah يُبْغِضُ الْفَهْشَ الْبَذِي The Prophet ﷺ said, There isn't a thing that wears heavier on the scale of a mu'min than good manners. And verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates wicked, uh, wicked or sinful speech. Habitifillah, <laughs> This hadith shows us that, of course, after Tawheed, after worshiping Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala alone, being a, you know fulfilling fulfilling the obligation of worship of Tawheed Allah, that the greatest thing on the scale of the mu'min, as the Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam let us know. is husn al is righteous manners. So that Ahlul Sunnah, first and foremost, should be the best in manners when we're practicing. When we're practicing what we preach, when we're practicing following the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then of course, it goes without saying, that we should be following this hadith and working on our manners. There isn't a thing which weighs heavier on the scale of the mu'min. So this affirms for us that the scales that weigh our good and bad deeds exist. Allah mentions it in the Quran Whoever scale is heavy on the day of judgment with good deeds will will be uh, the recipient of Jannah. Will, will, will go to Jannah, and whoever's scales are heavy with wicked deeds and sins will be the inhabitants of Jann uh, Jahannam. Wa iyadun billah min dalika. So, also from this hadith, it shows us, as we mentioned, And verily Allah hates wicked and sinful speech. So likewise, Ahl Sunnah, from the characteristics and sifat of Ahl Sunnah, is that they avoid wicked and sinful speech. So we should be first and foremost in training our tongues to be obedient to Allah to avoid wickedness and sinfulness through the tongue. Because as the Prophet let us know in another hadith that the sins, if one can control his or her private parts and their tongue, then he وسلم, will guarantee that they will go to Jannah. Of course, after they have, if they have embraced Tawheed, they're from Ahla Tawheed, from the uh, Muwahideen. So letting us know through our speech, wicked speech, and of course not guarding our private parts from the Haram, that these are things which lead to the hellfire. And the opposite of that is by restraining your tongue and restraining your private parts to only that which is lawful, meaning no zina, no adultery, masturbation, all of the other uh, sinfulness, sinful activities, then this is a way to uh, a sabil to jannah. And part of that fahish al badi that the Prophet mentioned, that some of the explainers of hadith mention 
that that refers to also the people who argue and they are excessive in their argumentation, meaning they tajawuz al had they go beyond the bounds. For example, someone makes tibdi of you, they declare that you're an innovator, so you turn around and then say that they are a kafir, you make takfir of them. Or someone uh, attacks you, says that, says that you're sinful, or just criticizes you, and you make tibdi of them, you declare them an innovator. So these are characteristics we should avoid. We should avoid that which is sinful by the tongue. Likewise, backbiting and slander, as we've mentioned countless times, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates those characteristics and that those are from the reasons one is punished in the graves. The Prophet وسلم, went, behind, went by uh, two graves of the Jews and Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, إِنَّهُمْ لِيُعَذِّبَانِ وَمَا يُعَذِّبَانِ فِي كَبِيرًا Verily, they are being punished. And they're not being punished for something which the people believe is great. أَمَّا أَحَدُهُمَ فَكَانَ اللَّهِ يَسْتَرُ مَنْ لَبَوْ وَمَا الْآخِرُ فَكَانَ يَمْشِ بِالنَّمِيمَةِ So the Prophet Alayhi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, As for one of them, they used to not protect their private parts uh, you know, clean themselves properly, maybe making a stinja or protect themselves from urine. And as for the second one, is they used to make namima. They used to spread, uh, speak about people with the intent to spread wickedness around the community. So this is why Ahl Sunnah avoids these characteristics. However, as we are weak, as we are human beings, we find that some of our brothers and sisters engage in this activity. Sometimes we find ourselves engaging in this activity that we make mistakes and we speak ill about people without the right to do so. Or we enjoy backbiting and indulging in backbiting and speaking ill about people. We indulge carrying tales. We in indulge in carrying falsehood about people. How many times has someone a da'i or a talib al-ilm or someone been declared innovators and the people did it with no proof and the people who who found out this information spread it without verifying it sheikh so-and-so said this she, uh, student so-and-so said this so-and-so is an innovator because of this so-and-so defends this one because of this these types of characteristics are medhmoom they are sinful and you should do everything possible to avoid involving yourself in those type of activities along with this or in contrast or however we might also add though that that does not negate that we speak about ahl bidah and that we refute ahl bidah and that we refute the mistakes even of our Salafi brothers and sisters. We refute the mistakes, but we maintain their karama. We maintain their status. This is what even some of the mashayikh who are known for being strong against Ahl bidah and sometimes even some say strong against others from Ahl sunnah that they say, how many times have we listened to this and how many of the tapes will you hear this from Sheikh uh, Ubaidah Jabri, Hafidullah Ta'ala, or from other mashayikh that they, they, they clarify this qaida, this principle for us. But do we see the people practicing this? Do we see the people who even go and, and attend the lectures of the Shaykh, giving their Muslim brothers and sisters from Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah the benefit of the doubt? Or do instead they fall under the hadith that we just mentioned? Ma min shayin athkulu fi mizanum mu'min yawm al qiyamah min husnu khulq wa inna allaha yubghidu. Al Fahish al Badi, and verily Allah hates wicked and sinful speech. Do they fall under that? Do they fall under those who are spreading sinful and wicked speech? So guard your tongues, my brothers and sisters in Islam. Protect yourself, protect your private parts. Strive your best to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ilm wa thiq wa basira. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi. وسلم <تصفيق>